Welcome to the Arizona Department of Agriculture Weights and Measures Self-Study Course. Introduction to RSR Licensing. This training is for registered service representatives licensed by the Department of Agriculture Weights and Measures Services Division. It's for anyone studying for the RSR licensing exam. And while there might be useful information in this presentation, Paper Recovery RSRs are required to complete a division training course before taking the initial competency examination and every 36 months thereafter. The goals of this presentation are to provide you with the information you will need to pass the RSR test and the tools you'll need to do your job. You will learn how to use the website links to find important reference material, what laws affect you as an RSR, how to use the National Institute of Standards and Technology handbooks, and how to apply for the RSR exam. Before we begin, we'll review some important terms. The first is division. This means the Arizona Department of Agriculture Weights and Measures Services Division. Interchangeably, we use the term weights and measures. Next is ARS, Arizona Revised Statutes. These are the laws passed by the state legislature. Next is AAC, Arizona Administrative Code. These are rules passed by state agencies. The ARS and the AAC both combine to make up the laws and rules that apply to registered service representatives and rules regarding commercial devices. RSR is Registered Service Representative. RSA is Registered Service Agency. We'll review these terms in great detail later in the presentation and review the legal terms for each. NCWM is the National Conference on Weights and Measures. This is a professional nonprofit association of state and local weights and measures officials, federal agencies, manufacturers, retailers, and consumers. NCWM develops the standards that are adopted in Arizona. NTEP is the National Type Evaluation Program. This is the program administered by the National Conference on Weights and Measures. NTEP certification provides confidence that a device will be manufactured in accordance with standards as adopted by NCWM and published in Handbook 44. NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. NIST is a federal agency that collaborates with U.S. and international weights and measures organizations. They publish the standards handbooks and implement the program to ensure traceability of state weights and measures standards to the international system of units known as SI. There are several requirements that must be met to become an RSR. First, you must work for a registered service agency. You must pass a competency exam with a score 75% or greater. You cannot take the test more than three times in six months, and you must wait seven days prior to retaking the exam. You must complete the license application and pay the initial license fee. In order to maintain the license, an annual license fee shall be paid. Information on testing and the license application can be found at the website listed in the presentation. Earlier in this presentation, we had the term RSA. RSA is a registered service agency. It is defined in the Arizona Revised Statutes, Section 3-3401. The definition is any agency, firm, company, or corporation that for hire, award, commission, or any other payment of any kind installs, services, repairs, reconditions, a commercial device, or tests or repairs vapor recovery systems or vapor recovery components and that has been issued a license by the division. The other term we learned of earlier is RSR. This is a Registered Service Representative. This is defined in ARS 
3-3401. An RSR means any individual that for hire, award, commission, or other payment of any kind installs, services, repairs, or reconditions a commercial device or tests or repairs vapor recovery systems or vapor recovery components and that has been issued a license by the division. An RSR is an employee of an RSA who has been issued a license by the Department of Agriculture Weights and Measure Services Division. The RSR can place a commercial device into service, repair a commercial device, or remove an official rejection tag. The RSR must carry their license with them when performing RSR duties. We're often asked, what if I am the only employee slash RSR? Meaning that you're self-employed one person business. When there's a company that consists of only one employee, you must first become an RSA. After your RSA is established, then you'll complete the qualifications and become an RSR. The current annual fee for an RSA license is $24, and the annual fee for the RSR license is $4.80. So effectively, if you're a self-employed person doing work described as an RSR, you'll first get an RSA license and then become the RSR. So what is a commercial device? A commercial device, by statutory definition, ARS 3-3401-13, is a commercial device, means any weighing, measuring, metering, or counting device that is used to determine the direct cost of things sold or offered or exposed for sale, or used to establish a fee for service if the cost is based on weight, measure, or count except that it does not include those devices used for in-house packaging, inventory control, or law enforcement purposes. Examples of commercial devices can include truck scales, deli scales, water vending machines, livestock scales, fuel dispensers. This is an example of a commercial device license issued by Weights and Measures. You'll see here the location address. In this case, it's Joe's Grocery at 9876 A Street in Phoenix, Arizona. Down below here, you'll see the corporate mailing address. So this is the address that the license will be mailed to. It's Joe's Grocery Corporate Office. You'll see the expiration date. So this expires on October 1st, 2021. And up here is, it'll say BMF number. That BMF is the license number. So it's license number 98765. On the side here, you'll see the number of commercial devices. So in this case, it has one commercial device. And then next here, you'll see a fee code. And the fee code is a code that indicates the type of device that's licensed. In this instance, it's a fee code 001. And we have a table that shows what the fee codes are, what they stand for, and what the cost of that license is for that fee code. In this case, the fee code of 001 is a small scale with a capacity of 0 to 500 pounds. So why are RSRs important? Having trained personnel using calibrated equipment to verify the accuracy of the sale of goods is imperative. What would happen if all the scales in Arizona were calibrated with a one pound weight that was only 0.9 pounds? What if fuel dispensers, propane, or other metering equipment did not dispense the proper quantities? What impacts would this have on businesses and consumers? RSRs are very important to ensure a fair playing field, both within the business community and for consumers. What are the responsibilities of an RSR? The responsibilities of an RSR are outlined in 
Arizona Administrative Code R3-7-602B. The first they have to install only commercial devices that meet the requirements in AAC Title III Chapter 7. They have to perform all appropriate tests when repairing a commercial device to ensure that the requirements of ARS Title III Chapter 19 and AAC Title III Chapter 7 and Handbook 44 are met. It's important to know that the requirements of Handbook 44 are enforceable as law under ARS 3-3413. For example, we've seen some businesses purchase scales from the internet. While there's nothing wrong with this, in some instances they are purchasing scales that are not legal for trade, meaning NTEP approved. As a licensed RSR, you cannot calibrate or place in service a scale that is not NTEP approved. It would be your duty to notify the owner, secure the device from use, and notify the division that the scale is not approved for commercial use. Here's another example. Upon inspection of a truck scale, it was identified that the scale was not NTEP approved. The scale had been licensed by the RSR. The division tagged the scale out of service since non-NTEP approved scales are not allowed to be used in the state. And the scale was not grandfathered prior to 1975. This was a very expensive lesson for the RSR and the site. It's very important to ensure that commercial devices are NTEP approved. Question. An RSR can leave their license at the office while performing RSR duties. This is false. An RSR must always carry their license with them while performing RSR duties. We'll continue reviewing responsibilities of an RSR. Report to the user equipment or commercial devices that do not conform to NIST standards. Complete placed in service reports accurately within seven days and provide a copy to the owner or operator. Report to the division, and there's a phone number 602-542-4373 or email dwm at azda.gov within one hour of finding a device installed to fraudulently obtain consumer credit card information, such as a credit card skimming device. Also notify the local police of such device. Here's another example. You're called to a location to calibrate a dispenser meter. You notice that the dispenser is leaking gasoline and you're not able to calibrate the meter without further repairs that cannot be done at that time. What should you do? First, notify the station owner operator. Clearly document your findings and recommendations on the invoice or work order. Place the dispenser out of service. Notify the division if the site owner operator continues to use the device without repair. Example, the division routinely finds grocery store device licenses with inaccurate scale counts. One reason this happens is because the person installing scales submits the placed in service report adding the new scales. However, the store owner or operator or someone else has removed the old scales. Therefore, the store operator is being billed for scales that have been removed from the site, but not the license. What could you do to help your customer? When adding new scales to the device license, inform the site operator to review the device license and verify the scale count is correct. If practical, remove devices from the license that are no longer present. Question. When a device has been tagged with a red out-of-service tag, who can make the repairs? A. The owner, operator, B. A licensed RSR, or C. Weights and Measures Services Division staff. The correct answer is B. A licensed RSR. 
Arizona Revised Statutes Section 3-3471-B1 allows a RSR to remove an official rejection tag, known as an out-of-service tag, placed on a commercial device. RSR Equipment Certification All test measures used to calibrate commercial devices must be certified prior to use and on an annual basis. How do I get my test measures certified? You would schedule an appointment with the Arizona Metrology Laboratory. Alternatively, you can utilize another NIST certified metrology laboratory. You will need to submit the certification documentation to the Arizona Metrology Laboratory to maintain your Arizona RSR RSA license. The phone number for the Arizona Metrology Lab is 602-771-4938 and the fax is 623-463-0440. Question, you're called by a gas station owner to perform repairs in response to a non-compliant device that was tagged out of service by the division. When you perform the repair, you notice other deficiencies that do not comply with Handbook 44, but were not noted as part of the tag. Do you need to address these deficiencies prior to placing the device back into service? True or false? The answer is true. The RSR is required to perform all appropriate tests when repairing a commercial device to ensure that the requirements of ARS Title III, Chapter 19, and AAC Title III, Chapter 7, and Handbook 44 are met. When submitting a placed in service report, the RSR is certifying that the device meets the standards. Question. If an RSR finds a credit card skimming device installed in a fuel dispenser, they must A. Contact local law enforcement B. Report to the division within an hour by phone or email or C. Both of the above. The correct answer is C and this can be found in the division rules that Arizona Administrative Code are 3-7-602-B1F. So what is Handbook 44? We've been talking about Handbook 44 throughout this training program and have noted that you have to follow the requirements in Handbook 44. While well, during this training, we're not going to teach specific requirements as part of Handbook 44, we're going to review some of the general parameters of the handbook. So it provides the specifications, tolerances, and other technical requirements required to be met by all commercial devices per Arizona Revised Statutes 3-3413. Unless otherwise stated in rules, all devices must meet the requirements in Handbook 44. The applicable edition of Handbook 44 is adopted in Arizona Administrative Code R3-7-101. And currently we have adopted the 2018 revision. The link on this presentation will take you to Handbook 44 to obtain a copy of it. Handbook 44 consists of various components. First is the general code. This section of the handbook contains requirements that pertain to all commercial devices. This is found in section 1.10 of the handbook. Examples include, but are not limited to, requirements for commercial devices to be labeled with the identification. Commercial devices shall be suitable for the service in which they are used and maintenance requirements. So this is where you're going to find various uh, maintenance requirements and requirements for identification and to ensure that the commercial devices are suitable for service in this general code which applies to all commercial devices. So all RSRs, no matter whether they're performing work on scales or fuel dispensers, um, have to become review and become familiar with the Handbook 44 general code requirements since it applies to all devices. After the general code, each section includes requirements for the particular devices. 
So a few examples include scales are in section 2.20, liquid measuring devices, for example, fueling devices, section 3.30, and water meters, section 3.36. So you'll want to review the table of contexts of Handbook 44 to verify which sections are applicable to the work you will perform as an RSR. You'll want to review those sections and become familiar with the requirements. And the link table of contents will take you to the table of contents for Handbook 44, so you can perform that review. Each technical section of the handbook is divided into five sections. Application, which includes the applicability and exemptions from the code. Specifications, relates to the design of the equipment. Notes, includes the official testing requirements. Tolerance, specifies the performance requirements. And it fixes the allowable error or departure from true performance or value. And user requirements, directed the directed to the owner or operator of a device and also apply to the selection, installation, use, and maintenance of devices. So let's take an example from the general code. The general code, as we mentioned, applies to all commercial devices. So as you can see in this picture, we've pulled out the table of contents that we discussed, and you can see here G desk S.1. Identification is on page 1 4. When we go to this section, it states that all commercial devices must have an identification clearly and permanently marked on the device. So, this is going to be your nameplate with the information regarding the device, including the name, initials, and trademark of manufacturer distributor. A model identifier that identifies the pattern or design of the device, a non-repetitive serial number, except for equipment with moving or electronic component parts or software, and the current software version or revision identify for not built for purpose software-based devices manufactured as of January 1, 2004, and all software-based devices manufactured as of January 1, 2022. In the tolerance section, G-T dot, it outlines when the acceptance tolerance or maintenance tolerance would be applied. So you'll see here, G-T dot one dot, acceptance tolerances, outlines when the acceptance tolerance shall apply to equipment. G-T dot two dot, Maintenance tolerances outlines when maintenance tolerances shall apply. Question. Are specifications, tolerances, and technical requirements for commercial devices found in NIST Handbook 44? The answer is yes, they are. Question. You need to study everything in Handbook 44. True or false? False. You only need to study the general code, which is section 1.10, and those sections applicable to your field of expertise. Examination Procedure Outlines, EPOs. NIST has developed examination procedure outlines for commercial weighing and measuring devices. They provide an outline of the Handbook 44 requirements. These were developed by NIST as a guide for the field examination of commercial weighing and measuring devices. They can be found at the NIST website listed in this presentation. Question. An RSR can use tolerances for adjustment of devices. False. See Handbook 44, G-UR.4.3, Use of Adjustments. Weighing elements and measuring elements that are adjustable should be adjusted only to correct those conditions that such elements are designed to control and shall not be adjusted to compensate for defective or abnormal installation or accessories or for badly worn or otherwise defective parts of assembly. Any faulty installation condition shall be corrected 
and any defective part shall be renewed or suitably repaired before adjustments are undertaken. Whenever equipment is adjusted, the adjustment shall be made as to bring performance errors as close to practicable to zero value. The Arizona Administrative Code, R3-7-604B, includes prohibited acts. An RSA or RSR shall not be prohibited by law. An RSA or RSR shall not file a fraudulent placed in service report delegate licensed authority to an unlicensed person, perform a function without certified equipment, install or place in service a commercial device before satisfying all of the statutory and rule requirements. They shall not fail to report to the division a commercial device that is found to be out of compliance, Install, calibrate, or repair a commercial device without placing a decal or label on the device as prescribed by the associate director. Leave a location where there's a non-compliant commercial device without securing the commercial device from commercial use. As an RSR, the division relies on you to perform and certify to the division that the work has been done correctly. Consumers in Arizona rely on you to ensure that they are getting what they pay for. As such, you might subject yourself to civil penalties for not submitting placed-in-service reports, failing to follow Handbook 44, statutes, or rules. According to ARS 3-3475, penalties could be up to a $1,000 civil penalty per violation or up to a maximum of $50,000 per 30 days. Question. I've been called to respond to a red tag at a site. When I arrive, I cannot find the tag or information regarding the issue. What can I do? There's a couple options. First, all inspection reports are posted online and can be looked up by inspection number, BMF, which is the license number, business name, or city. A link is provided to do such search. Two, you can email dwm at azda.gov or call the team lead for the area. There's a link for the Weights and Measures Service Division contacts to find out the team lead for your area. Third, you can ask the site operator if they have a copy of the inspection report, which you can review. How do I take the RSR exam? The link on this page has information on the agency website um, that includes how to become an RSR, how to become a Vapor RSR, RSR testing information, and study guides. As of the recording of this presentation, all RSR exams are in person at the Department of Agriculture uh, building at 1688 West Adams Street. Phoenix, Arizona 85007. Review the information on the website to find out if you need to notify them ahead of time to make an appointment and for the applicable times that they are administering exams. This page contains links to many resources that we've discussed in this presentation. The RSR RSA licensing information, the Arizona revised statutes, Title Three, Chapter 19, Articles 4 and 5, the Arizona Administrative Code, Title Three, Chapter 7, Article 6, Handbook 44, Handbook 112, which is an optional handbook, the National Type Evaluation Program Certificate of Conformance Lookup, the California Type Evaluation Program Certificate of Conformance Lookup, and the Arizona licensing fee codes. This has been the introduction to RSR licensing. We have other videos that go into more depth on particular subjects such as NTEP, how to complete placed in service reports, and examples of placed in service reports for fueling skills, etc. We recommend you look at our website to review some of these other videos. 
If you have any questions regarding this presentation or any questions in general about being an RSR or RSA, you can contact the division at dwm at azda.gov or 602-542-4373. For more information and other division contacts, you can go to our website at the link below.